So I took my SAT my freshman year of high school. I got a perfect score the first time. I've probably been studying for the SAT since I was in fifth grade, maybe. Hello, oh my God. Welcome back to the channel. Today we are gonna be doing something a little bit different. Um, and this one's going back to my old days, my old high school days, but we are gonna be talking about the, everyone's three favorite letters, the SAT. It's actually been like a hot second. It's maybe been like two years or maybe even three years since I took the SAT, but I definitely did a lot of SAT prep and I feel like along the way, I learned a lot of tips that really helped me. And so I wanted to come back today and just share some of that wisdom with you that I acquired over my years. Um, for context, no, I was not that person who perfect scored the SAT on their first try or took the SAT as a freshman or even was like sitting in SAT classes since like after school, fifth grade. Like that was not me. Um, I studied for it in high school. I did do like quite a bit of practice, I guess, because like I remember I did like Khan Academy. I would do just like my self practice. And then I also did this like SAT boot camp right before I took my SATs. So I feel like I. I don't know, like these tips, they worked for me. They helped me get a, a 1570, um, which is what I applied to college with. And so I just wanted to share some of those tips with you today. Tips with you today. Um, if you're new to my channel, my name is Sarah and I post videos every week. And if you like my channel or if you're interested, definitely subscribe and support your girl. But otherwise, let's get straight into the video. So I actually wanted to just split this video into three parts and talk about each of the SAT sections separately. There are a lot of tips um, and different ways that you can approach the SAT and when you're actually taking it, they can help you improve your score pretty drastically, even without necessarily putting in a lot of practice. Like these are just ways that you can change your approach. Um, and these are also ways that you can change the way you practice so that practicing is more efficient in terms of increasing your score because Honestly, like if you're not doing, if you're just taking tests over and over and over, you're not gonna actually see much of an improvement unless your problems like time, maybe you'll get faster. But in terms of your ability to actually answer the questions, that's not really gonna change just by brute force taking as many questions, answering as many questions as possible and trying to get as much exposure as possible. Although yes, that is important. But okay, so section one, we're gonna talk about my favorite section, which is the math section. Um, so usually when I took it, I was always able to go, th so the math section was my strongest section. It's a section I either got perfect scored on or nearly perfect scored every time. I got 800, that was, I got an 800 on it and um, usually I had enough time to go through the math section and then check over it as well. But what I have to say for the math section, especially if you're struggling with, so if you're struggling with time, yes, practice is probably one of the best solutions, but also whether or not you're struggling with time or if you just don't know how to answer some of the questions, the thing about the math section is that the types of questions that they ask are always the same. Um, they are, they're always testing the same skills um, and they just like change up the numbers every time. So especially with the math section, you really like if you miss a question or if you notice that you're taking a long time on a question, these questions aren't meant to be super tedious or long. So if you're taking a long time on a question or you don't know how to do the question, definitely read the solution. Um, so like most textbooks that you use always have like detailed solutions in the back. So always read the solution so that you know how to do that question next time because it's probably going to show up again. Um, and like you're probably going to notice that if you're missing questions, you're probably going to be missing the same types of questions. And once you've gotten exposure to like the whole gamut of questions and you've read through the explanation and know how to solve every all of them, then like no matter what the SAT throws at you, you would have like you would have known how to solve that type of question. And so I think that's one of the best things about math is that it's like this limited domain or like range of types of questions that they can ask. Um, or like the skills that they'll ask and so you like know like this is a set of things and skills I need to study and you can really easily study for it. Um, so the middle medium difficulty section personally for me was writing and I think that writing is the section that a lot of people are like they have an intuition for it um, where it's like you can read a sentence and you're like okay this sentence sounds right because like you, I mean, we like for especially for people who are really fluent in English, you're like, this is like common, like you, it's like, you're like, that's what sounds right, and that's how you answer the questions. 
But the truth is, if you really want to be able to get like a nearly full score on the writing section, you really have to know the grammar rules. So like my tip for you, and honestly, this is probably the case where it's like best to like buy a book or like one of their like SAT grammar books, but there's actually not that many grammar rules, but once you get exposure to them, and you'll, they're also really easy to pick up on and understand because these are rules that we use in daily life. Um, but just simple things like parallel structures or um, misplaced modifiers, like all of these simple rules, they're just like putting fancy names on things that we sound, think sound right already. But when you know these rules, so, um, and you see a question, you're able to like kind of in your mind be like, okay, this is the answer and you're able to justify it. And I think that was one of the biggest things for me for writing was being able to justify every single answer. And it's something that it became a habit for in my mind. And that's how I could almost like guarantee that I was gonna get the question right. But you should always be able to point to the specific like um, grammar rule or whatever, or like, or if it's like, should there be an S at the end of the word, you should be able to point to like the exact word it's describing. Like always justify your answers in your mind. And if you can't justify your answer, you need to figure out why. And once you're able to justify every single answer and have evidence for every single answer, you will be able to go through those questions so quickly, so confidently, and you're gonna get them right. So I know that that sounds like a large task, but like with the writing section, it really is just learn like this like finite set of grammar rules become familiar with them. It's not hard because like you've already know them. You just like don't know what they're called or you don't know them explicitly. But once you do, I promise you your writing score will go up so much. This like actually saved my life. And it's like, it's just becomes habit now. And it actually, it doesn't, it sounds really hard, but it's actually not. And it's so worth it because it will improve your score so much. The last section, which is my personal killer section. Um, the one that I had the most trouble with was reading. And so most people, the biggest thing that most people have trouble with on reading is the time management. Um, most people don't finish. I know that that was the one that I had the most trouble finishing with. And so first off, like keep yourself on track. I'm pretty, if I'm correct, that section is four passages at 52 minutes total. At least that's what I think it was when I took it. So 13 minutes of passage, no more, no less. Try to be really strict about it with yourself because you don't want to get behind. Because um, once you're behind, you're going to start to panic at the end. And once you start to panic, you're going to just be getting so many questions wrong. So that's kind of another thing. Don't panic. When you panic, you're just going to get so... Like when you're panicked because you think there's a time crunch, you have to stay calm. It's better to just read, answer what you can, than just completely just like guess because you're going to get all those questions wrong, most likely. Um, another thing that you can do for the reading section that personally I didn't do because eventually I was able to get my time down enough that I was able to finish the section. But if you know that you're having trouble finishing the section and you know that even like going into the SAT that you're most likely not going to finish everything, figure out which types of passages you're either you're like faster at, better at, you tend to be more accurate at um, and do those first. And so like I think there's like a compare and contrast passage, there's like poems, whichever type you're better at, do that first so that you know you're getting those easy points and that you're not like losing easy points and wasting time on harder questions that you might not even get right because that's just a waste of time. Um, another thing is like, especially when you're time crunch, when you're practicing, you're gonna give yourself the 52 minutes and then you're gonna stop. But what you should really be doing um, in terms of time for the reading section is give yourself as much time as you need when you're practicing to fully finish the, the section. Because otherwise, like, if you're only giving yourself 52 minutes and stopping, like, yes, you're practicing under realistic time conditions, conditions but you're never gonna, like, get the practice you need of actually doing all the questions. So, like, your goal should be do all the questions. Next time, do all the questions again or like a different set of all of the questions, but try to like slowly get your time down instead of just constantly cutting yourself off at 52 minutes because then you're, you're just not getting the practice. Um, some other things that you can do, some people like to annotate. Um, personally, one thing that I like to do is I like to skim the questions really quickly first. I know it can be hard to justify, especially when you're time crunched, to go through the questions, then read the passage, then go to the questions. But it's something that personally really helps for me. Um, another thing is for all of the questions, even if, and I know all of these tips sound really time consuming, which can make it really hard. But once you get your time down, 
um, is like, again, with every single question, justify your answer. Be able to like go back into the passage and point to the exact piece of evidence that's supporting what you think it is. Because oftentimes that is just, it just helps your comprehension of the passage so much better. And so that's just something that I really like to do. Um, overall SAT tips is honestly start early and don't be afraid to take the SAT multiple times. I personally had to take the SAT twice. I know a lot of other people who also had to take the SAT twice. Um, in general though, don't worry about it too much. Um, getting a perfect score is not that important. Um, and like how, I, I don't know if I've talked about this before, but your grades, your scores, your like SATs, those are gonna be things that colleges look at, but once you get like a good enough score that the college considers you, they don't care about it anymore. Then they're just only gonna care about your application. So your SAT score is only what's gonna get you considered in a college, it's kinda of like a cutoff, but what's actually gonna get you into college is everything else, your extracurriculars, your essays, your recommendations, all of that. So don't put too much stress on your SATs because it's actually not that important. And from personal experience, like, there has not been much correlation. I mean, I guess there's some correlation, but like plenty of people with really good SAT scores don't get in. Plenty of people with not so great SAT scores do get in. So don't over worry about it. And again, most colleges don't require that you report all of your scores. They only require that you report your highest one. So don't be afraid to take it multiple times. Um, in terms of actually taking the test, I would recommend taking it somewhere that you're comfortable with. The first time that I took my SAT was at this really low-key preppy college or high school in our city and it was one that a lot of my friends went to so I went and took the SAT with them but it was just I was just so scared and I remember being so self-conscious like this sounds so dumb but this is like true story. I remember being so self-conscious because I was like the only person not wearing like Lululemon leggings and like vineyard vines t-shirt and <laughs> also that school was so scary like someone during my sat section got kicked out by the proctor because they bubbled in the answer right when time was called and they were like no you're cheating they kicked him out and like that was like scary to me so the next time i took it at my own high school where i was much more comfortable where the proctor like i was so much more comfortable with the proctor and it was just a so much less stressful environment especially because i knew i like knew the layout of the school all that and that honestly i don't know if that made a difference or like why i did so much better the second time but i did so much better the second time so yeah i took it twice you can take it multiple times too the last thing i'll say is the essay but actually i'm not going to talk much about the essay because i'm going to be real I never really figured out the essay. I took I took so many practice essays and I just never really figured it out. But MIT still took me. So honestly, maybe it doesn't really matter. Thoughts? But okay, that is all I have to say about the SAT. Um, again, overall, best of luck if you're taking it soon. Quarantine is definitely a good time to study for it because, you know, get it out of the way you this is if you're trying to be productive right now like get it out of the way now so that when quarantine's over you don't have to worry about this anymore and starting earlier is always better because then you have more opportunities to take it it's less stressful and honestly yeah and you'll just just get it get it done get it out i took it the very beginning of my junior year i think yeah i took it at the very beginning of my junior year and anyways, I wish you all the best with quarantine. Happy quarantines, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.